Hi folks, um, my name is Kate and I am here today in the beautiful Craftworld studio on behalf of Knit Now magazine <laughs> to put this little baby to the test. This is the Knit Pro wool winder. So I have used wool winders before or ball winders because um, you can wind different types of yarn other than just wool but I've not opened this one at all um, so that I can open it on camera with you folks, give it a go, show you how to use it. Um, I've get, got, got a couple of ways that will hopefully be useful for you, including I'm gonna show you how to use this to wind from a skein without a swift. So the swift is the big fella that kind of often looks like an umbrella without a cover on it that holds your skein of yarn while you're winding it. Sometimes you just get the ball winder and you don't have a swift yet. So what do you do? So I'm going to get to that later, but first of all, let's get into it. So I'm going to switch us to our lovely overhead camera. There we go. So you can see what I can see here. Oh, um, hi guys. This is end of the video, Kate, coming in to tell beginning of the video, Kate, to remember to tell you guys to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, visit Craft World, um, buy knit now. Make sure you've got a cup of tea. Um, tell your dogs and cats that I love them and yeah so um, yeah back to the beginning of the video Kate so it comes in a little uh, bag for protection and here is the contraption this is a piece that slots in there that will wind your yarn onto it but it's kind of handy that that comes separate with this because it means when you pack it away it can take up a little bit less space but there it is slots in quite nicely you've got a clamp underneath with a little rubber foot so you can clamp it to your table to your desk while you're winding this is what you thread your yarn through. This is the little handle that turns the cone that you wind onto. So pretty simply, that's the anatomy of your ball winder. So this is your handle, your clamp, your cone. And I tend to think of this as the uh, hook. So hook, cone, handle, clamp. That's what I'm going to refer to this as in this video. So. Let's give it a go, shall we? I'm going to clamp this on here, onto the table. You do need to make sure that your surface is nice and flat. Okay, so we've got our ball winder nice and tightly wedged in. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift the table a little bit so you can all see better. The magic of working in the studio so you can do. So what I've done is I've set up our little boil winder here. There she goes. Um, it's nice and securely fastened onto the table. Our hook can be in whatever position we want. And it's nice and secure. So the first thing I'm going to start with showing you is how to wind a ball onto this to create a center pull ball and to tidy up any messy balls that you might have in your stash. So we're starting with some King Cole Merino Blend DK, which is one of my favorite yarns, but this ball has been sitting around for a while. It's got a bit tangled and it's not a center pull ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yarn from the outside and I'm literally just going to drop this on the floor 
and it will go wherever it goes and it's fine because I'm in a relatively big open space. Um, sometimes you can put that in a bowl or something to just keep it from rolling around too much. Um, what I'm going to do is just tie a little slip knot in there just so that there's something for the ball winder to grab hold of and this will be easy to untie later so we pop this into the slot in the top of the ball winder so you can see there it's that little slip knot is stopping it from escaping and then we wind it through the hook so that it's moving freely through there that's just going to help guide the yarn into place and now we just turn the handle make sure you're moving in a steady pace as you go uh, keep this make sure that no tangles make it through your hook keep going in the same direction I tend to go clockwise first and let's go Hi folks, this is editing Kate the next day in the office and I'm just realising some of the uh, video clips that I've recorded, the um, autofocus is playing some ridiculous games so it keeps going zoomy in and outy. I'm really really sorry about that. So if you find that distracting, I'm really sorry. Um, hopefully the audio commentary will still give you all of the useful info you need um, and I'm also going to do a video sorry i'm also going to do a photo tutorial on the craft world blog so if you find that too distracting just go to craft world and we'll have a photo tutorial so you won't have to watch the video going zoomy in and outy to uh, follow this tutorial okay so let's cut back to the studio <laughs> make sure you had in fact securely fastened it onto your table before you start mine was a bit loose Okay, so just there, I had a little bit of uneven tension because I had a knot. So what I'm gonna do is slightly pull back so you can see that it's slightly, it just slipped off the bottom of the plate there. So I'm turning anti-clockwise and pulling the yarn off as I go until I get to that mistake, which is there. Go back a little bit further and then I'm gonna start off again making sure that I'm maintaining that even tension. It was literally just because there was a knot in it. And there we go. So pull this out first, because this will be your center pull. Pop your ball off of your ball winder and you have a lovely center pull cake. And the thing I absolutely love about this and the reason I wind all of my yarn with a ball winder is because now if I show you on the top camera now you've got a nice flat cake that as you pull yarn out of it it doesn't go anywhere so you can just sit that next to you and it's not rolling around it's coming out really smoothly from the top so that is how we wind a simple ball of yarn Want to take it to the next step okay so really really popular lately has been patterns where you hold two strands of yarn together at the same time i really really like those but they are a pain in the bum if you are someone who knits on the move like i do i do most of my knitting i get done on the train on the bus all that kind of stuff so it can get a bit tangled so let's say you're doing a project which mixes Rowan Summerlight 4 ply with Rowan Kid Silk Haze and you want to get all of the tangly nonsense out of the way first while you're at home safe away from you know the general public they don't understand us they don't get why there's balls of yarn rolling around the aisles they just want to sit on their train and get to work so we can do this 
So as ever, take your ball bands off first, keep them aside. Actually, what I tend to do is I'll fold up my ball band and I'll pop it into the middle of a ball that I have wound so that you've still got all of the key info. So I'm going to grab one end of Kid Silk Haze. Look at how delicate that, you can hardly see that, can you? Look at it, it's so pretty. Um, I love holding Kid Silk Haze along with another yarn for a project. And this is Rowan's Summer Light 4-ply, which is a really beautiful cotton 4-ply. Um, it's just, oh, it's got a little bit of squish and bounce to it, which a lot of cottons don't. So what I will tend to do is throw one of those over there, have the other one here. You can get where I'm going here, can't you? So the same as that we did before, tie a little slip knot in the end, thread that through the top of the cone, and then we go through this hook. Oh, there we go. And the hook is, um, it's made in such a way that you don't have to go straight through it. It's like a coil, so you can just wind around it and it will go through. So I'm gonna start slowly with this. I'm gonna go clockwise again. Keeping a very careful eye on both of my yarns, making sure they're both going through together. And I'm going to create a blended ball of Kid Silk Haze and Summer Light 4-ply, which I will be able to knit as if they were one yarn once I'm done. So very important to go slow with this. Make sure as the yarn is going through your hands, you're not seeing any knots, any tangles. Keep the tension nice and even. Make sure you are keeping that uh, handle turning in the same direction all along. You can take a pause for a little sip of tea if you need. Very necessary part of crafting, keeping oneself hydrated. Um, I'm just holding this with uh, my index finger between the two strands of yarn uh, because I find that helps me uh, keep them nice and neat and tidy. Oh, thing. I love about rowing, one of the many things I love about rowing yarns is that they will have uh, similar shades in different um, yarn bases. So this beautiful, beautiful uh, sage green is very similar across the two yarns. Obviously it's never gonna be exactly the same because it's a different fiber content, but it's very, very similar across the two balls. So they just blend together absolutely beautifully. So I'm gonna carry on with this. I'm gonna speed up the footage and I will be back when we've got a full ball. And there we are at the end of the ball. There is a teeny tiny, a teeny teeny tiny little bit of Kid Silk Haze left on its own. But these, are, these two balls are very similar in yardage. So once again, we can just pop this off here and you'll see that we have a beautiful center pull ball of two strands of yarn held together. Now, I will say you need to be careful when you're doing this, particularly when it's delicate yarns like these, to make sure that you have even tension as you're pulling them through. You don't want to end up with the ball winder taking up more one yarn more quickly than the other, um, because then it'll start getting uh, bunched in your knitting. Um, and I would tend to want to work from this straight away. I don't like leaving it to sit. Uh, particularly if it's quite tightly wound. Um, if you think that is going to be a problem, you can always wind it again, which is something I will show you when we wind the skein. So there's our little double ball here. 
I'll show you a close-up. Here she is, isn't she beautiful? Just absolutely gorgeous and so soft. And when you knit with that, the halo is gonna be amazing, but then the incredible stitch definition of the Summer Light 4-ply will mean your stitches will still show up. It's just a brilliant, brilliant way to get the best of both worlds when you're knitting. Okay, so we're on to the big one. Here I've got a skein of oh, West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece, which is one of my favourite yarns to have come out recently. It's 100% um, British wool, spun in Yorkshire by the nicest people you will ever meet in your life. Honestly, I, I love the folks at West Yorkshire Spinners so much. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, I love all of the guys in the yarn industry, but um, I think because us as a magazine and West Yorkshire Spinners were new at around about the same time. We've kind of grown together. Um, so we're, we're kind of close in that way, I think. Um, this is a skein. Now, this is how a lot of more um, high-end yarn is put up, particularly hand-dyed yarn will be put up in a skein um, or a hank. I think a skein is a particularly sized hank someone will tell me if I'm right there. But basically what it is, it's a big loop of yarn. And while I know there are some people who can knit directly from this, I am not one of them. I need to wind this in, into a ball for me to be able to knit from it. So the reason it's sometimes a good idea to have yarn in a skein is particularly if you are buying from a hand dyer if they don't have um, industrial quality balling machines which are in the hundreds of thousands of pounds to buy <laughs> massive factory equipment um, it's very difficult as you will have seen to ball a yarn at an even tension at home and you don't want your yarn sitting tensioned which is why i said if you're not using um, this one straight away that you will want to uh, rewind it so that it's it's relaxed so you see this one is sitting here nice and relaxed because it's only a small ball um, but the more yarn you wind onto a ball with with something like this there will be tension put into the yarn whereas in a skein there isn't any tension sitting in it what people tend to do is twist it this way and then fold it back on itself and that is essentially the yarn sitting as flat as it possibly can. Um, so it allows the yarn to stay nice and plump. Um, it will be more true, your, your tension won't change as much. So if you, um, sometimes if you knit yarn that's been stored under tension on a very tight ball, um, you should be swatching anyway. But if you skip that stage, you will miss this and it will happen to you and you will be very, very grumpy. Um, if you knit straight from the ball that's been held under tight tension, um, when you wash it and block it, it might shrink back down because you've knit it stretched out and then it's returning back to its natural, more squished state. You'll end up with a, an item that's smaller than intended if you've not swatched properly. And also it can damage the, the yarn. So you don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the top down camera so I can show you how to deal with your skein when it comes to you. Here we are. So this is our skein laying out flat. Please ignore the glitter here. I was paper crafting earlier. <laughs> it gets everywhere, glitter does. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my little pencil case and some little scissors. You can do this with snips or whatever. You want to just find, there will usually be three points where the yarn is tied. So what I tend to do is just snip off the knot in all three places. One there, one there, and one there. So you'll see these knots, these two are just two strands of yarn. This one is four strands of yarn, which tells me that this is where the actual end of the yarn is. So these two loops of yarn, I can just pull out. Those were just there to stop the yarn from tangling while it was being stored. And this piece here 
is where the two ends of yarn are. So there's a little bit to tie it and there's one end there and there will be another end on the inside there. Now, if you have a swift, great, pop your yarn on your swift. I don't have a swift today. So I am going to use the oldest trick in the book, which is the back of a chair. <laughs> back of a chair. There's, there's nothing to beat it. Honestly, it's, it's magic. It, well, I say that if you've got um, a willing helper who can stand with the yarn like this while you turn the handle or vice versa, that's great. You can try and do it on your own with it like this. I don't recommend it. You can try and, someone told me they put it around their feet. I mean, fair play to that person. I am not that athletic. I'm gonna put this over the back of a chair. You don't have to put your chair on the table. I'm just putting it here so that you can see, because this will, uh, I will be able to pull from this skein. Actually, I've got two chairs. I could put it over the back of two chairs if I wanted to. I could turn this chair upside down. This might be what I do, actually. So you can turn the chair upside down and the skein will move around like that. Shall I move the camera so you can see a little bit better? So I'm going to give this a try. So I'm going to, the same as we did before, winding the, the ball is exactly the same. You can also feed the yarn over the top as you go around if you don't want to let the yarn move around. I'm going to grab the end, going to tie it in a little knot, little slip knot as before, pop that into the little groove at the top and we go around the hook so that we're going through nice and smooth and So I actually have something up here. There we go. So as you can see, chair legs work nicely. While we're here, let's try a couple of other options. So I'm going to turn this chair the other way up and use the back of the chair. I possibly won't need that hook with this, so let's see how this works. So I'm just guiding the yarn off the back of the chair with my other hand. Oh, is it the right way up? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, you do still need to be a little bit ambidextrous, but it definitely works. Works quite nicely, I think. Can you do it? Ho, ho, ho. Can I do this around my neck? <laughs> it will definitely get tangled in my hair. Oh, something went wrong back there. That was probably... You'll be able to rewind and watch where, where that went wrong. But it's just, just another opportunity for me to show you how to fix a mistake. So just pull it back. So it's probably my fault for changing tack halfway through um, because the enemy of any ball winder is uneven tension. So you want to always keep the yarn that's on its way into the ball winder nicely under tension. So what you can do if you have absolutely nothing at all, it will take a little bit longer, is just go bit by bit. And I'll show you from the top down camera so you can see a little bit better. 
you want to just wind off a little bit oops there so whenever you stop and start make sure you're doing that gently so you can wind off a little bit from the skein oh just have a little knot there that's my fault so you can just leave the skein flat and guide it off like this particularly if you spread it out let me get rid of those little scrappy bits so if you spread it out nice and flat like this oh. this honestly these uh, misfires are all entirely my fault for not paying attention there we go just so you can see the ball winder there. So you can see that that's coming off nice and evenly, but I'm keeping the yarn under tension with my fingers here and just guiding it around so that it's nice and even. What you wanna watch out for is, you see that little bit of yarn there in the middle that's just trying to escape. I want to if, if that happens, see, yeah. this is why this is my least favorite way to wind a ball of yarn. The, the chair leg is definitely the way to go. But again, like I say, you might not have the right type of chair. So you need to keep a close eye on the ball itself and also on the skein on your table if you're doing this method. And this can be good for if you've got smaller skeins, chunkier skeins where there's not too much to wind. I think because we're getting, with this ball winder is getting quite full now, so it's just, every now, every now, every now and then it's just catching at the edge there. Yeah, I think it's just because it's too, the ball's too big so when you get to the point where you're finding the yarn is falling off the sides that means your ball winder has reached capacity so just snip pop off and you've got your little ball so i am going to retwist this skein here because i can go back to that and wind it again later so give it a little twisty twisty don't worry about these dangly bits and then just fold it over and open up one end, pull that loop through, and then you've got a little skein. I would tidy that up if I was putting that back in my um, stash, but I'll go back and wind the rest of that in when we are off screen. So what I would usually do, this one isn't too bad actually, so you can see it's not looking too tight there, but what I would normally do is because I don't like a ball to be under too much tension if you've got a ball that's looking a bit tight all you do is pop it back on from the from the center make sure that's nice and squidged in and then I wind in the opposite direction so you can do this quite quickly thing to watch out for is that you won't be able to fit as much on when you are winding under looser tension because the ball will be physically bigger with bigger pockets of air in it so you will find that your ball winder fills up a little quicker so let's snip this so under standard tension this ball winder takes about 50 grams comfortably um, our little uh, blended ball is under quite tight tension, I would say, and that's uh, a full 50 gram ball of the, um, yeah, so it's a full 50 gram ball of the Summerlight 4-ply and most of a 25 gram ball of the Kid Silk Haze, but that's very dense. Honestly, I would, I would need to knit with this straight away to loosen it up because I don't want it sitting like that, it'll get all sticky. Um, 
whereas this I could wind a whole sweater quantity of yarn and this is very good sweater yarn and leave that sitting quite happily for a couple of months and not worry too much that it's going to get squished so let's just wind off this second piece and we'll uh, we'll come to some conclusions And we've got a nice second little ball there. Look at them, look how cute they are. They're extremely precious. So, let's have a look at all of the things that we have wound. Now, our little, our little winding party today has gone very well, don't you think? Look at them, they're so squishy. It's the end of the day folks I'm I, this is all I have the brain capacity to do is just wine balls of yarn um, yeah I think this little gadget has performed extremely well if you don't already have a ball winder you need one even just to watch it spin just like that <laughs> don't let your hair get caught in it um, yeah I think this is a, a great little ball winder it folds down smaller for storage which is nice um, it's not got as many moving parts, which means it's less likely to break because only this piece is moving and not this piece. Whereas with mine, I've found over the years that this piece doesn't quite move like it used to, but if that doesn't need to move, then happy days. Um, it has come uncoupled a couple of times, but I think that's just because this desk is very, very chunky. Um, so it's a lot for it to get a grip around um yes i've enjoyed this i hope you found this useful i hope you've learned uh, something from the different things you can get out of a ball winder even if you don't have a swift uh let us know if you have any other thoughts please do um if you like the look of this and you don't have one already um check out the knit now subscription offer because you can get one for free when you subscribe to knit now which not that i'm biased it is the best knitting magazine in the world it just is um, and we'll see you again very soon. Well, who knows? It could be another three years before we post a video again. <laughs> <laughs>